and welcome. It's another time for your Power Sector Program, Power Wheel, brought to you by the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. Stay with us for details of these and other reports. This is Power Wheel, and I am Chinwenwa Anyaun. The Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, keeping to the implementation of its master plan, has begun the rehabilitation of the major transmission lines in the Lagos region using the improved gap conductor technology. The project comprises the rehabilitation of the 132 kV Ikeja West double cycle transmission line from the south station and running to Alimoshu. The rehabilitation continues from Alimosho to Ogba, Alausa, and a tee off from Ogba to Ota in Ogun State using high capacity gap conductors. At the groundbreaking ceremony, which held at the Keja West Transmission Substation in Ayobo area of Lagos, the managing director and CEO of TCN, Mr. Yuji Mohammed, said the firm is judiciously using its resources to create lasting impact. Mohammed said the current Ikeja West transmission line marked for rehabilitation will upgrade the bulk power wheeling capacity significantly, which will also improve supply to consumers. The line has 664 capacity, megawatt of capacity of transformer. The current line, the current, the, the current line uh, had, has only uh, 200 megawatt of uh, capacity. So this reconducting we do will increase the capacity by 2.5%, which will upgrade that line to 500. Now, if you look at the line between Ike, uh, Ikorodu, I mean, if you look at the line between um, between uh, Ikeja West and uh, Ota, if you look at the line between Ikeja West and Ota, if you factor that line, it means that the total combination, if you do this 200 times 2.5, plus that... Uh, 250 megawatt that is on that line, it means we end up having 750. It means all transformers on that line uh, will be energized. That means there will be no transformer that will be there that will not have source of, will not have supply. The head transmission service provider TSP at TCN, engineer Victor Adewumi, said the high capacity gap conductors were discovered by TCN to be more efficient and it is replacing the existing aluminium conductors. Aside the project being flagged off, he mentioned other transmission lines that have been marked for rehabilitation. Some of the lines we are going to rehabilitate include Abaitu, Wanted to KV line, Kaduna Adejia, Wanted to KV line, Kumboso Kankea line, Onisha Oji River. Alaoji to Waba, Bini, Iroa, Ukila, Okene to Ajakuta, Akure, Abeke to Wantitu KV Line, Portacot Main to Portacot Town, Bini, Skebu, Sokoto, among others. As we kick out this reconduction project here today, the reconducting of Ikeja West to Alimosho to Oba, Alausa, and from Oba T of is the beginning of many projects, many reconducting want to do in TCN. So let me congratulate Mesa's Electrical Solution Limited for becoming successful after going through a very strict, competitive and very transparent selection process. On the impacts of the project when completed, Adeumi said more bulk power will be available for distribution to end users by the Ikeja Electric. I must warn that TCN will not allow undue delay of this project because as we conduct this line, there are going to be a lot of outages, which means during the course of this project, uh, we might not be able to deliver supply to the affected areas. So because of this, we will not allow undue delay at all. This project must be delivered as uh, when due. This project, when completed, will allow Ikeja Disco to offtake the full capacity of all the transformers along the substations to be supplied by the line. Finally, I want to congratulate and commend the MD CEO of TCN and the entire TCN team for working tirelessly for TCN to become the leader 
in the Nigeria electricity supply industry. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Energy, Lagos State, Mr. Abdul Hamid Mustafa, said the ministry has dedicated a team to work with TCM for the timely delivery of projects, especially on issues of right of way. On behalf of the Lagos State Government, is that we are ready, we are ready to partner with you on the issue of right of way or any occurrences that we hinder the early de deployment of this project, we would like to help you clear them out of the way. Once again, thank you very much for thinking of Lagos State and you have in Lagos State a partner in the successful delivery of energy to residents of Lagos State in Nigeria in particular and Nigeria in general. Thank you very much. Chairman of Ikeja Electric, Mr. Kola Adishina said, the Nigerian consumers are interested in constant power supply and that he was pleased with the process to ensuring this is in place. I would want to say that anything that leads to that availability and reliability and stability of power is principally all that the Nigerian citizens are keenly interested in seeing. For that to happen, there is only one thing and nothing else. And that is that the stakeholders that can deliver electricity are working together harmoniously with common vision, common plans, common objective, and then they can deliver that stable power to the citizens of Nigeria. The essence of our presence here today is primarily just to lend our total and unalloyed support to TCN in doing all that is required to be done in strengthening the infrastructure that delivers electricity to the people. Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, has hosted Nigelec, the electricity supply company of Niger Republic and an international customer of TCN, as well as the Mainstream Energy Solutions Limited, a Nigerian hydropower generator, to a meeting on improving energy exports. At the meeting which held at the TCN headquarters at Powerhouse Abuja, the Director General of Niger Lake, Mr. Al Hassan Halid said the Niger Republic delegation came with the Minister of Energy to also have a discussion with Nigerian's Minister of Power, Engineer Salim Mammon, on the renegotiation of willing charges for electric transmission to Niger. We came with the Minister, and in my understanding, I know that the object of the, 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 the mission of the Minister is to come and renegotiate, especially the willing charges. He also said the Niger-led team was at TCN to discuss their payment for energy willing charges from Nigeria. In his comments, the Managing Director of Mainstream Energy Solutions Limited, MESL, Engineer Lamu Aldu, said both Nigeria and Niger Republic share resources, especially the River Niger, and that added to the previous consideration in the price of energy mainstream a Nigerian generation company, Genko, exports to the country. The shared vision, shared vision of Niger, the relationship between Nigeria and Niger. All these things were put into consideration to arrive at them. That's why the negotiation took a long time. The managing director and CEO of TCN, Mr. Yuji Muhammad, in his remarks said, the rules of the ECOWAS Regional Electricity Regulatory Authority, ERERA, mandates West African countries to institute bilateral agreements in the trading of energy, which means only willing buyers can contract with willing sellers to enhance the energy export business. So as of today, all the energies that are exported outside Nigeria to energy, energy for all of them are all over by bilateral agreements. There is no single of them that is based on the former regime of uh, system partition. Of, uh, of, uh, of a diplomatic uh, So between us and Togo now, we sell them maximum of 75 gigawatts. 
discovered by an agreement with CET and uh, Niger Delta Power Group, the, 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 the one is SBE, which is the distribution company of Benin. La compagnie de distribution de Benin. It's between them and Paris. Et c'est entre eux et nous. Which used to be 60 mW, but they've increased to 90 mW. So that's just how it is. The TCN boss, who is also the chairman executive board of the West African Power Pool, WAP, said the cost of willing energy to TCN ought to be the same with the one it charges Togo and Benin Republic. We'll be back with more of the headlines after this break. Verify that land before you buy it. To drastically reduce the incidence of building under the transmission rights of way or encroaching on designated TCN land, members of the public are hereby requested to verify land near or along transmission line route before purchasing it. Verification should be made in the Land Development Authority or at the TCN office. This would help in drastically reducing the incidence of building under transmission line right of way and save us all the problem of pulling down the structure or truncating transmission line expansion projects in your community due to court injunction. Help us serve you better. Verify that land before you buy it. The Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Bunnaya Onu, has said the current administration is committed to harnessing renewable energy sources towards tackling the effects of climate change. The minister stated this in Abuja during a two-day national workshop on renewable energy roadmap for Nigeria and lessons learned on deploying biomass-based mini-grid systems. It was organized by the Energy Commission of Nigeria, ECN, with support from the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA, and the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO. Dr. Anu said, although Nigeria is rich in fossil fuel, it also has vast renewable energy sources that can be used to mitigate the effects of climate change. Though we are a nation uh, rich in fossil fuels, we are also rich in uh, renewables. All that we mentioned uh, are available in very reasonable quantities here in the country. So there is that commitment by the administration of the monarchy to mitigating the effects of climate change so that you know, uh, we can live uh, in a better place for our children and uh, our uh, descendants. Uh, and uh, we are taking number of steps uh, and I believe during this workshop we will be looking at this roadmap which will be very helpful uh, to us in providing energy. He also said Nigeria was developing the energy sector to ensure it fosters the transition from depending entirely on commodities to now depend on knowledge which is innovation driven. Nigeria is in transition Many people may not fully uh, appreciate this, but I believe with time it will become very obvious. We are moving our economy away from depending entirely on commodities. Just because we have uh, a lot of natural resources in abundance, uh, we tried in the past to allow our economy to depend on commodities. Uh, first, agricultural uh, products and later, group uh, petroleum, but um, we've seen that that is not the way to go. So we're in a transition, moving our economy away from depending entirely on commodities to now depend on knowledge, and that is innovation driven. So there is no way you can build a knowledge society without energy. It is not possible. It is just not possible. Also speaking, Director General of ECN, Professor Ella Ibala listed the drivers of adoption of renewable energy in Nigeria to include availability of renewable resources. In Nigeria now, the major drivers for renewable energy utilization are that is availability of the resources, the renewable energy resources of the sun, wind, biomass, hydro, 
portion thermal ties and waves and geothermal heat. The other driver is the principles of diversification of energy mix for energy security, enable availability, enhance adequacy, and its affordability. He said Nigeria is targeting to move in the adoption of renewable energy from the pace it is now to 100% adoption level, but that there will be some consequences. The arena remark process is to assist us accomplish that. May I once again welcome you all and wish us good, good deliberations. Thank you. The managing director and CEO of the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, Mr. Yuji Mohammed, who made a presentation at the workshop, said, TCN was working to contribute to the development of renewable energy in Nigeria. He said, through the development of key power transmission lines that can evacuate power from solar independent power plants or other renewable energy sources. We have 2014 solar in Nigeria. Uh, this 14 solar, you, you, I'm sure you are aware that none of them has reached financial close. But uh, last week we decided uh, to uh, come with a different model how we can get one of them to reach financial close. Because it doesn't make sense. If Burkina Faso can have 33 uh, megawatt, 33 megawatt on the grid more than three years ago, I don't know why Nigeria is still dancing. We don't have a single uh, megawatt on the grid. So we have decided that uh, we are going to use some of the things that we are doing now, like eligible customer regulation to partner one of the hydros, because we actually have these eligible customers that come to us. So we are going to ask one of the hydro to partner on one of the solars. Mohammed noted that there is a relationship between poverty and access to energy, adding that TCN recognizes this and it is working to improve bulk power transmission infrastructure on the national grid. Now let me also tell you, all these mini grids other arrangements that we are doing, they are good because when you have scarcity, because um, in the whole world, there are more than about five countries contribute to more than 50% of lack of access in the whole world. And those five countries are Nigeria, Ethiopia, uh, Congo, Tanzania, and uh, Kenya. And if you look at these five countries, Nigeria has, is the, has the highest lack of access. So it means that if we want to follow the same method to expand or to give electricity to our people, it's going to be difficult. So we have to employ every form of expansion, mini grid, franchise, or any method that we're going to do. But I can tell you for economy of scale, whether we like it or not, the grid is eventually going to be the most cheapest way of generating electricity. The Federal Ministry of Power said it has strengthened its reforms just as it warned its officials against poor service delivery. The Permanent Secretary in the Federal Ministry of Power, Mrs. Didi Wilson Jack, who revealed this at a sensitization program for the officers of grade level 4 to 17 in Abuja, said the ministry created the Department of Reform Coordination and Service Improvement, RCSI, in 2014 to promote the culture of excellent service delivery. In line with the heightened reform stance by the Minister of Power, Engineer Salim Mamma, the Permanent Secretary, who was represented by the Director of Procurement, Mr. Ahmed Abdul, charge the officers to observe the rule of service compatibility, Savicom, which has a ground rule of serve others the way you want to be served. The Department of Reform Coordination and Service Improvement was created in 2014, among others. And one of the mandates is the sensitization of the civil servants on how to be effective and efficient while on duty. To this end, staff are reminded to know what is expected from them. The department has been sustaining members of staff as part of its mandate. The National Coordinator of Savicom at the Presidency, Ne Nakajimelu, who was represented by his staff of Savicom, Ne Kauli, in a presentation said, ministries, departments and agencies, MDAs, 
should have a service charter, which is a written statement of commitment of an organization to provide to its customers quality service. Government agencies are mandated to have in place policy documents stating commitment of the organization to provide its customers quality service. The document covers key information about the organization's service delivery approach and the relationship the customer will have with the organization. As a policy regulator, you are responsible for other organizations. I think um, the customer service handbook has been circulated and I've seen quite a number of them. There's the organizations that are critical components of the power sector, of the ministry. NBET, uh, the DISCOs, the GENCOs, all of them are part of the customers to the ministry. Akajimeli charged the officers to ethically adhere to the provisions of the charter and do what is needful at the various offices to uphold public trust. So it's not about what I think, you know, it's about the service as a whole and about the person waiting to receive service from us. So what are the critical elements in customer care? Setting standards. Setting standards. The director at the Department of Reform Coordination and Service Improvement, RCSI, in the ministry, Bernard Nwachuku, charged the officers to always adhere to their rules of engagement and maintain high etiquettes. One of such etiquettes is discipline. Every organization must endeavor to have disciplined workforce in order to attain its goals. There is nobody here that has no schedule of duty. Then the question will be, you ask yourself, because you can deceive anybody, but you cannot deceive your conscience. This duty I'm being given, am I doing it the way it should be? Am I disciplined in it? Rules and regulations must be adhered to, and the interest of the service organization must be put first. Citing the instance of the teacher recently rewarded by Governor Zulum of Borno State for her dedication to duties, he said great rewards awaits anybody who is dedicated to his duty because you may not know who is observing and that they should strive to rise to become a leader. Effective leadership involves exemplary character, hard work and transparent integrity. Every officer must be familiar with management rules and regulations regarding good conduct. Everyone must obey lawful orders and established authority. You're still on to Power Wheel and we're bringing you more reports in the Power Flash segment. Please stay with us. That is it on this edition of Power Wheel. Do join us next week for another refreshing edition. This episode and the previous ones are available on our YouTube channel. You can also connect with us on these other platforms as we strive to serve you better. I am Chiwenwa Anyao. Enjoy the rest of your day. <music>